Hello and welcome along to Box to Box. Well, we finally made it to our final show because it's the end of the season. So, of course, to my left is my partner in crime. It's Sophia De Stefano. How are you doing? It's a lot <laughs> nicer <laughs> label. I was going to say earlier. it in my Italian no, no. accent, and then I thought actually just she let's not offend people. <laughs> um, I'm very good, thank you. And as always, um, we have an, a very exciting uh, week ahead of football and boxing, which we want to talk about. We do indeed. Okay, so later on in the show, we'll be talking to Anthony Joshua ahead of his next fight. And don't forget, you can join in the conversation on Twitter, so tweet us at box to box show On the sofa, as always, we've got a whole host of guests. Frank Bullioni, a former European champion and current holder of the WBA International Super Middleweight Belt. Welcome, Frank. We also have Dan Levine, journalist and avid Chelsea fan <laughs> like myself. Had to put that one in. Had to get that in. And finally on the sofa, we've got journalist Sam Boswell. How are you doing? Yeah, good. Thanks for having us. Okay, before we get it down to the serious business of talking, let's take a look at the headlines of what's been happening over the last week. Well, there's been a whole world of football news since we last saw you. Of course, unless you've been in a cave for the last week, you'll know that Leicester City have won the Premier League. They've celebrated their coronation as Premier League champions and their first title in 132 years with a victory over Everton at the King Power Stadium. This was the Fox's official homecoming after they won the league on Monday when Tottenham failed to beat Chelsea. Leicester concluded the story that has captured the world's imagination when captain Wes Morgan and manager Claudio Ranieri jointly lifted the Premier League trophy. There is no question though it was an aggressive match between Chelsea and Spurs players and fans alike last week and as a result of the carnage Spurs midfielder Moza Dembele has been banned for six games by the FA for violent conduct against Chelsea's Diego Costa. Belgium international Dembele appeared to eye gouge forward Costa during the Spurs 2-2 draw with Chelsea. Referee Mark Klassenberg did not punish the 28-year-old during the game. Dembele chose not to contest the charge and will now be unavailable to manager Maurizio Pochettino until Spurs fifth game of the season. Well, in other Chelsea news, John Terry will not be able to say goodbye in their last match of the season after receiving his second red of the season against Sunderland on the weekend. The long talk about the move for West Ham is finally happening. The Hammers play their final competitive game at their 112-year home against Manchester United tonight. West Ham will move to the 100, not 160,000 capacity at London <laughs> Olympics venue next season. This season, they have won eight, drawn seven and lost only three of their 18 home games. Well, to round up our football headlines, Burnley are back in the Premier League once again. The Clarets ensured their instant Premier League return by beating QPR 1-0 on Monday. Their celebrations haven't so far gone exactly to plan after Burnley players were deprived of the chance to lift the championship trophy at the end of the match because of concerns of crowd control. When they finally lifted the trophy at the Town Hall, not all of the players were given a medal, though. Joey Barton was the last one to arrive and seemed to remain medalless. However, that is the last of their worries. Let's see if they can actually keep themselves in the Premier League for more than one season. I know it's mean, but it's true. Okay, let's take a look at a busy week in boxing with Sophia. Yes, the biggest fight of the year ended in Amir Khan being knocked out in brutal fashion by WBC middleweight King Canelo in the sixth round of their Las Vegas showdown on Saturday night. The Bolton boxer was risking everything by moving up two weight classes and started the fight well, but the world-class punch power of Canelo proved too much. Now fight fans are calling for the big blockbuster unification fight between Gennady Golovkin and Canelo himself. Meanwhile, back in Manchester, Anthony Corolla retained his WBA world lightweight title by knocking out Ismail Barroso in the seventh round of what was a sensational performance. Other news from the weekend, Derek Jazora lost out on the European title when he lost 12 tough rounds against Puller. And finally, I'm delighted to say that Tony Bellew has landed a WBC cruiserweight fight at his beloved Goodison Park. Lifelong Evertonian fought at Goodison during filming for the movie Creed, and now he has the chance to turn his dreams into reality when he takes on Makubu for the vacant WBC strap. I well, cannot that, wait. I bet you can't. Well, that's all the boxing news. So, Frank, you've been causing a storm on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> what have you been up to with Harry Kane and how come you guys are sparring together? Um, well, he's actually, he shares a strength and conditioning coach that I do, um, a guy called Anthony Charlton. He kind of, he nursed him through from the youth team to uh, where he is now. And um, he's, he took me under his wing for the last two, three years. And um, I've, been, I've been training nicely alongside him. And he's, he's paired the two of us together. 
and he thinks um, a little bit of boxing will, will do Harry the world of good. The fact it happened after the Chelsea <laughs> game. This is the main issue. This is what I find fascinating. The fact he also had a pair of boxing gloves on at the time. <laughs> was football a topic of conversation? Um, I didn't bring it up. I didn't want to uh, rub salt in the wound, to be honest, but he was hitting hard enough. So there was, there was definitely a little bit of uh, underlying anger there. Right, now back to boxing. Your fight before last was for the world title against yep. Chudinov. Yep. Um, unfortunately, you lost it, but it went to 12 rounds. It was a very brave performance. What did you learn from such a big occasion like that? Well, I mean, the, the, the build-up, the training, the camp, um, obviously all the pressure. It was, a, it was just a great experience. And um, it definitely brought an, another level out in me. Um, and I want to take all that experience and um, those emotions mm -hmm. forward with me when I, uh, when I hopefully fight for another world title in the future. Now, you've moved up to light heavyweight. Yep. How have you found the transition? It was probably something that I needed to do a little while ago, but because the big fights were there at Super Middle, I decided to stay. kind of killed me to, to boil down to 12 stone. Because naturally, I'm around 14, uh, 13 stone 10, especially when I'm training. Um, so to get down to 12 stone really, really drained me, but the big fights were there and uh, that's what I'm in the game for. But now I'm light heavy, I'm, I'm a lot stronger, a lot more confident and um, there's some big domestic clashes there. Okay, so having watched Amir Khan at the weekend, obviously that didn't go according to his plan. Has that made you any more apprehensive about the move or are you still feeling as confident? Well, I think that kind of, it, it showed it was the right move because when you're, when you're boxing at the wrong weight, um, then it can be detrimental to your health and your performance. And when I was making super middleweight, I think it was just taking that, that little bit out of me, um, leaving me a little bit drained. And I think the Tudinov fight, although I hung in there for 12 rounds, um, his energy levels were a lot better than mine. And um, there's no way he trains as hard as what I do. But <laughs> he, uh, he certainly had the energy and the, and the fitness. Um, talking of training, you previously um, trained with the Collins brothers out in Dublin. Yeah. You're now back in London, training with Don Charles. How's it feel to be back home? I mean, it's, it's great to be home. and. Uh, the uh, the travelling was was very draining. Obviously, I miss my friends. I miss my family. So it's nice to have all the uh, all the comforts and the and the friendships again. But again, what I learned over in Dublin and what I, what I needed to to make it work, be living the hardship and uh, kind of cut all the niceties. And that's 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 the same mentality I, I take to my training now. But I'm I'm wise and I'm experienced enough and mature enough to to be able to separate and differentiate between. The, the good living and the hard living when it needs to be uh, fight time. Okay, well, talking about hard living, we may as well move on to Chelsea. <laughs> 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 I can't help you it, there is a lot of Chelsea fans. Very good link. <laughs> exactly. so, Horrible link. So, Chelsea, as a massive Chelsea fan, it must have been disappointing. What do you make of their season so far? I mean, it's, it's gone from bad to worse, really. Um, it's, it's so easy to laugh at <laughs> <for> me. <laughs> yeah, you uh, use it, a sour face. Yeah, it's, it's, it's not been great for us. Um, I think we, we obviously started off poor. Um, Mourinho, I think he had a lot going on. Um, he, he isn't the same manager as what he once was. And um, we made the change, we got rid of him. And um, I think we'll, we'll move on from that now. OK, we're talking about manager change. Dan, Conti's coming in. It is a big task to undertake and kind of a disappointing task as well because there's going to be no European football and the transfer room has already started. So what do you think are his first moves? Well, the first thing he's got to do is try and unify that dressing room. Um, that there seem to be a number of factions in there, just need to get people playing in the same direction. Some of the, the, the work has been done for him by Gus, um, Gus Hiddink, who, who's got people a little bit more positive, but the results obviously still are not good enough. Uh, and that's going to be a big, big ask for him coming into a completely new league, somewhere he doesn't know at all, and a completely new sort of surrounding system of football and everything. It's going to be a massive test, I think. It's going to be a hard task. But before we talk more about that, Sam, let's look at that Spurs game. They got nine yellow cards. It was disappointing on can we, both sides. Can we just sides. point out nine yellow cards on is... On Spurs' side, yeah. yeah. No, but it's also a Premier League record for a team. Let's just point And it was a out. massively disappointing performance for professional footballers. It just wasn't right, was it? Well... I'm going to be a little bit out there and say, actually, I thought it was one of the best games I've seen. <laughs> I think, listen, this show mixes boxing and football, but it's great to see passion on the pitch. And come on, I reckon if you, sh if you ask fans what their favourite as a neutral game was, that was out of everything. I mean, the goal at the end from Hazard was fantastic. I did feel for Spurs. I think they've played great football this season. As a neutral, I've enjoyed watching them and Leicester have been playing my team, Crystal Palace. But yeah, <laughs> they, the, the heads went, let's be honest. Yeah. But they're a young team, Spurs. They'll bounce back from this. Chelsea, on the other hand, good luck to you guys next season because I think you've got it all to do. I think the new manager needs to be given time. And at Chelsea, the one thing they don't get managers there is time. 
Talking of next season, uh, it's devastating news coming out this week, and I do <laughs> say Sophia devastating more than anyone else. Uh, strong word, but true. Um, John Terry looks like he is definitely leaving. We mentioned earlier, it looks like he's off to China for two years. How, Frank, how big a loss is it oh, to Chelsea Football Club? It's, a massive, then it's, it's an absolutely massive loss. Um, I mean, my brother is a he's a diehard fan, and he loves John Terry, and. Um, he, John Terry actually sent me a, a good luck message before the world title fight. I'm not meant sure you'll world get one now you've been sparring with well, him. That's, that's, that's true. <laughs> exactly. I, <laughs> well, I might get one from Harry. <laughs> but um, yeah, so he, he's, a, he's a genuinely nice guy and um, he cares so much about the club. It's going to be uh, terrible to see him go. Dan, Conti could really have benefited from someone like Terry being there because you always need somebody that actually knows more about the club than you do. It's like a Rooney at Manchester United. You need that backup, don't you? So it's going to be even more of a difficult task. Yeah, yeah because John Terry is not just a defender. He's, he's obviously a man who lifts the entire dressing room. Mm -hmm. He's a man with an enormous personality, an enormous will to win. And, and taking that out of there changes the dynamic of the group immediately. And that's something, maybe in a way, maybe Conti maybe thinks that that's something that's easier to deal with. Taking that, that massive, you know, the elephant out of the room, if you like. Um, but it won't be easy, and Chelsea will be a very different place next season. Dan, do you understand the decision, though, by the club? Because I don't even get it from a football reasons, you know? OK, off the pitch, captain, he's so instrumental with the youth. On the pitch, he's won four Premier Leagues, five FA Cups, one Champions League. I mean, the list is endless. But he's still arguably our best defender and the first name on the team sheet. So the decision just seems It doesn't wrong, make doesn't sense. It? It, it seems a very quizzical one. I think there's a lot more to it than merely on-pitch performances. I think we've all yeah. sort of talked around that quite a lot, haven't we? Um, certainly him going out there and saying in January what the contract situation was publicly was not a popular thing in high places at Chelsea. Yeah. I think they believe that, that that sort of business is done behind closed doors, in boardrooms, and him doing that publicly was not popular But he must all. know that, so he must have done it for a reason. Absolutely, yeah. And, I, and, and you know, we've seen this in the past. You know, Didier Drogba, when he was in this position a few years ago, he already had his, in January, he had agreed. He'd had his decisions made. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and you wonder how much John has known what's been going on. He's seen the way the world is going, and he's, he's, he's taken those decisions early. We have two games left. Fan power, you know, we spoke about it on the Chelsea Fans Channel this week. Can fan power have any effect? You know, there's talking of 26 minutes, fans are going to walk out, big banners, chanting his name. You know, do you think it's going to make any difference? I think fans do tend to have power and they have managed to make changes, haven't they, to ticket prices and things like that. Liverpool, but actually, in, in this case, I'm not sure it will, but we will pick up the back with <laughs> this conversation. <laughs> I know, I shouldn't smile every time I talk about this stuff, but we will pick this conversation back up. We'll be talking Leicester, we'll be talking can Burnley actually manage to stay in the Premier League for more than one season and a whole lot more. Do join us after the break.